Greetings viewers, sadly today there will be no guns in this video, instead we are going to talk about the Magpul DACA grid organizer. I'm going to separate the video into a couple different chapters, so if there's certain things that you want to see about it, please feel free to look down below and skip ahead. The first thing I'm going to do is going to cover what's in the box when you open it, and the instructions that they give you on how to operate this stuff. Then I'm going to kind of show it in practice a little bit, and then I'll give my thoughts and opinions on it at the end. So let me go ahead and get the camera set up so I can show you what this thing is all about, and uh, we'll get into it. All right, so today we're going to be looking at the Pelican 730 volt edition of this product. There is currently only two options available. They do have intentions in the future of expanding their line, and they've already kind of announced that, so you can see here what is to come to include additional expansion pieces as well. So let me uh, show you what comes in the box. All right, so the very first thing you're gonna see when you open this box is we've got some literature that comes in here and they do make sure to point out that this is important. And it says before installing your grid, you need to replace the bottom piece of foam that comes in the case. So again, this is made specifically for one model of case. So you have to also purchase that separately. So this is gonna be two separate purchases if you intend to use this product right now. That other piece of foam that you pull out may be useful somewhere else. If you have a box in your truck somewhere or something you wanna use for, uh, it can come in handy for that. So the other piece on here that they tell you, and again, the large piece of foam that is in here is part of the system, don't throw it away. And that is this piece right here. So yes, you can tell that the uh, box is kind of a little square, so that thing is gonna be in an S or a Z shape kind of folded in the box with these other pieces here. So the instruction manual here, again, they show you, take the original piece of foam out of the bottom of the case and replace it with their piece of foam. Now, so I compared the two pieces of foam and the best that my eyes can tell, they are the exact same size and dimensions. The only thing that's different is the density a little bit. I'm assuming that Pelican probably uses a little different chemical composition than Magpul when they're uh, making their foam piece. So I don't know why you specifically have to use it, but that's what the instructions say. Then they just kind of go over how to attach the little grid pieces together, how to put them into your case, and then just general guidelines for storing your equipment inside the case using the supplied foam blocks. And then just of course they have their personal advertising gobbledygook on here. So what comes in this box? Well again you've got this big giant piece of foam that you use to replace the original bottom piece that comes in your case. Again, this particular model has four different blocks of, basically, if you're not aware of what this material is, it's styrofoam. They have it, you know, labeled as all kinds of things, EPP, whatever, and it's oil resistant and super protective, but I don't know if you can see the texture on there. This is just styrofoam, and it's not the cheap styrofoam like when you buy a television or you get a $5 cooler at the gas station. It is a little bit heavier duty, and it is coated. It says it's oil resistant, so if you've got solvents and stuff on your weapons that maybe leak out onto it, it's not uh, like this foam here where it's gonna just soak right in, and then you've got a nasty stain on it, so it's supposed to be good for that, but that, they needed something, I guess, light, because could you imagine if this was made out of rubber or a heavier material, and you tried to fly with it with all your equipment in the case, and this was made out of some thick, heavy piece of material, you, uh, you definitely would get charged at the uh, counter quite a bit. So these pieces do snap together fairly easily that you can see they have these little teeth on here and they match up with the other small piece. And all you do is, and you can hear the, uh, the styrofoam sound there, you just squish them together. And it's that, and it's that simple. So you've got these four pieces that again cover the, they cover this piece that you've replaced in the bottom of your case. So those will lay on top of it. And then it comes with these uh, little separators here. They do advertise that you can buy more of them separate, including this size or different angled and wedged shape ones for uh, different configurations you may have for your weapons. So these all separate fairly easy. It just uses the same pegs that go into the squares on the grid, and you just kind of place these around on there as you need around your equipment, like you saw kind of in the instruction manual, or pictures that you've seen of this advertised, which is probably why you're watching this video, because you wanted to learn a little bit more about it. So let me go ahead and get this thrown inside of the case, and then we'll get a little bit better in-depth look at it and uh, how it works. All right, so as you may have seen in the instruction manual, this is the way that they recommend you putting this in there, just so that you uh, get it in and you don't have to fight with it, and you don't potentially damage your grid pieces here. So once you get it installed, like that you just kind of push it down make sure these lock into place and line up and 
And so we've got our grid laying flat in there and then we've got our pieces here that we can now separate. We can put our equipment in there. Once you separate these, they just plug in and you can obviously put them in as you need around your equipment. So let's get a uh, weapon put in here and we'll, and we'll take a look at how well that works in practice. All right, so as you can see, I've just got a basic couple blocks in here just for demonstration purposes. It's n if you think you're gonna get it to look exactly like the uh, pictures and advertising that they show for it, I can't even imagine the amount of time they spent behind the scenes trying to find a weapon that they could get in the case that absolutely fit perfectly to make it look good. Your equipment will not always be exact to the dimensions of the grid. Again, they do have some other pieces coming with wedges and different shapes, so maybe those will help a little bit. But depending on how you have your stuff configured, again, it's not always gonna be perfect. All right, so now you've seen what comes in the box. You've seen generally how the product works. It's pretty plug and play, easy to figure out. So what do I personally think about it? I think Magpul did a good job coming up with something innovative that's kind of been an issue for many people for years. I don't know about you guys, but I know for myself personally, I've owned numerous different Pelican cases over the years, and my biggest complaint has always been the foam. And the reason for that, I either have to trace out and find a way to cut and make it not look like a piece of crap to get my weapons to fit in there just right, or pluck out all the little squares. Now, once you do either of those two options, you're now stuck with that piece of foam in that configuration for all of eternity, except maybe you can cut out some more pieces if need be. However, let's say you change weapon systems that you wanna transport, or you maybe take an optic off and you swap it for something else, or you put a longer barrel, or you change the stock, and your configuration is gonna change a little bit and that those modifications you're gonna to have to make to the foam are permanent. So you're either gonna to have to make it sort of kind of work or you're just gonna to have to get another piece of foam and start from scratch. Now, getting that extra piece of foam may be a little bit cheaper than doing it this route. This is not a cheap piece of kit. And again, you can't just go to the store and buy one of these for any case in existence. Right now, it's only made for specific ones. So again, in this case, you have to buy the Magpul portion of the product, and then you have to buy the case that it's gonna go in. So that's gonna be an added expense. The Pelican vault cases themselves, not even talking about the Magpul portion, let's look at the case. I'm not sure why Pelican decided to change from the older style case. I've got the 1700 and the 1720 here, and the plastic is a lot different. The vault series cases, the plastic is a lot more thin and pliable, and it's kind of more it's a little bit more flexible. Now, I don't know, I'm not a scientist or a chemical engineer, but I, I am aware that materials that are harder are more brittle and more prone to cracking or breaking. So perhaps that's the reason why they went with a little more thinner, flexible plastic. Also, it's probably a little bit lighter. And quite honestly for them, it's probably a little bit cheaper on the manufacturing side. So again, I don't know if that's their uh, intended purpose there, but going back and talking about the Magpul portion of this uh, setup here. So again, the pieces that you see that are the little divider sections and the tray that the uh, weapons sit on are basically styrofoam. Now, I kind of mentioned already that that's probably out of their limited number of options of a light, flexible material that they can use to get this to work and not make your case even more heavy than it's already gonna be with the weight of the case and all the stuff you have in it. Adding any extra weight on top of that is just gonna make it astronomical again to lug around. If you have to ship it or transport it on an aircraft, you're just gonna get reamed when it comes to the charges for weight. So it makes sense. Just keep in mind that styrofoam is not harder than the metal or plastic slash polymer that your weapons are gonna be made out of. So depending on how you have the stuff packed in there and how much jostling and banged around it's gonna get, that styrofoam is gonna lose every time. Also, it's a lot less flexible than the foam section. So if we were just using foam in the case, so take the Magpul pieces out of the equation and you're setting your weapon system on it, any accessories you have mounted on the side, such as flashlights or hand stops, lasers, anything that, that's protruding from the side of the weapon where it's gonna either touch the bottom or the top of the case, if it's just foam, that's gonna compress really easily when you try and squeeze that lid shut and it's gonna help you get a nice tight fit. 
With this product in here, this is a lot harder on top of that foam. So yes, it's gonna squish down a little bit. However, in the example of this Tavor here, I'll show you in a little bit closer view. I have a hand stop that I use on the side of the grip there, which I try and keep it uniform across all my weapons. So my hand's always in the same place every time, no matter which one I'm picking up. But I also have the side charging handle here. Now, do not fit with inside the holes inside the grid there. I cannot actually close the lid on this case with this weapon in here as it sits right now. Even if I flip it over and put the charging handle and the hand stop facing towards the top of the compartment, it still will not close because that styrofoam piece in the middle is taking away a lot of the, the squish and the give that you're gonna get when you're trying to compress this thing. So unless your weapons are completely flat sitting in here, or you can conveniently locate your charging handles or any sight mount screws or anything that's kind of protruding a little bit further from the side, extended charging handle latches, if they don't fit down inside one of those holes, it's gonna either dig into that styrofoam or it's gonna just prevent your case from closing altogether. So that is something to keep in mind. Again, it is an innovative product. I feel like it's a great idea and a great starting point. It could use uh, some more tweaks and configurations, perhaps maybe making the piece that's required to replace in the bottom of the case slightly thinner than the original piece because you are taking away a lot of that flexibility you have depending on how your weapons are gonna be laying in the case. So there's 100 different other things you can put in here that are gonna lay flat, depending on how, again, you have your weapons set up. If you've got all your gear on the top or bottom rail, there's nothing protruding out of the side, you should have absolutely no issues with anything here. Again, it's just gonna be a matter of, are the blocks and the grids gonna actually line up exactly where you need them to be? So again, I think that this is a great product, it's a great idea. It is still fairly new, so it does have some room to grow and change and adapt as people start having real world use case scenarios and reporting back to them with their experiences they can make changes as needed. So hopefully you guys and girls found this video somewhat useful, educational, give you a little bit more insight into this product and how it works. And again, the cost is not an easy pill to swallow for many, so it might not even be an option for quite a while until again, they start producing this stuff for other cases that you may already own. So you don't have to go out and buy those custom pieces of foam. However, that is gonna be your cheaper option. So this is my Pelican 1700 case that I originally had. I set up and cut out this foam for a class that I was taking for a my Tavor and for a Glock 34. So as you can see, this is kind of uh, butchered a little bit. I'm pretty sure you, I used a bread knife after taking a Sharpie and tracing everything out. So again, if you're into uh, aesthetics and that sort of thing, this is always going to be a uglier way to do it. I know people use some hot wire cutters and it gives you a little bit smoother and cleaner lines. I didn't have one of those, so I did the best with what I had. Some people use electric carving knives, whatever works for you, exacto blades. But again, this is a permanent modification. So the case right now is configured to have a Glock 34 without a tack light. I have a tack light on this pistol, so it will no longer fit in here. I could trace it out and cut out the section for that. However, that becomes irrelevant now because I have made some changes to my Tavor. The rail that's on here now, since I made this, the cuts in this foam for the rifle, this rail does stick up just a little bit further. So it's actually on par with an AR rail height instead of basically flush with the top of the weapon. So when I go to try and place this in here, it actually no longer fits. It's too tall. And the bipod on here has been added since I cut out the foam as well as the foregrip that has the flashlight mounted in it, which is now butting into the Glock here. So you can see the flashlight now protrudes to where the pistol would be, so we would have an open gap here that wouldn't really fit very well. And again, this weapon needs to actually come down and have some more space made to accommodate that rail section. So. Like I said, this is the purpose of the Magpul grid organizer is so you have that modularity, but it's not gonna be an exact fit. Ideally, this would be perfect. You could send this off somewhere, have it laser cut so it's nice and perfect for your weapon. But again, it's now dedicated to just the equipment that you specifically have set up at the time it was cut. This is ideally how I would transport my stuff for that exact reason, because it is gonna be supported and cushioned on all sides. And I know that I'm gonna be able to close my lid and any issues with the, uh, the styrofoam portion that's a little too, that doesn't give way as much as the foam does, this'll allow it to squish down and go where it needs to be to be again protected.
It's just a quick one today, no shooting unfortunately. We'll get into some more gun reviews and shooting, but I do wanna kinda do gear reviews and other stuff in between. Unfortunately, we can't go to the range every day, but that's okay. We can still find other ways to train and things to do to keep our skills sharp. So with that, I'm gonna thank you for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next video.